Hello and welcome to Dubai Trains and welcome to another DCC and sound install. I set the new benchmark for my layout. Everything should have a sound and a capacitor in it. And boy, do I get myself into trouble with this rule. You might have already seen the 44 tonner conversion. That was a bit of a lengthy drama. And here we go again with this Bachmann Saddleback 060 steam locomotive. Let's see if we can fit all the components in there. Here we go after the trailer. This video is made possible by the Dubai Trains Patreons. Check how you can become a member to unlock extra content. So opening up these little fellows is notoriously tricky. Uh, I think for one because the cab really fits tightly over the, uh, the body. And secondly because you have these parts such as the hand of the engineer and this grab rail here that prevent the cab from opening at all. So here we go, I finally opened the shell and this part of the boiler was actually initially attached to the housing right here just like that so you would see it from the inside as you see and this is a DCC ready model so what does that mean that means a few things it means it has a, uh, a board here with what is it like seven uh, soldering points where you can solder a, a DC decoder onto now there is a very very little space in this little unit as I will show you I'll demonstrate that right now so the height that we have in here about I would say a four mil but don't forget that this uh, motor has to rotate here on top so you cannot really lean onto it and also on the front side of things so that's going to be about 17 18 mil right there that's not a lot and then actually I initially wanted to put a, a speaker a boiler barker from scale sounds into the boiler but hold and behold inside the boiler ah, and it is this light tunnel for the headlight that's right there so this entire part of the uh, front section of the boiler we cannot use we already checked the height it's very limited let's see the width how much width do we have <laughs> this is 23 so there is almost no space the only space that's here is just a little bit on the top now there have been some other people that converted these locomotives and if you just take dcc you can actually put a small dcc decoder just here on the top but that's not good enough for us is it we want sound and more specifically after the bachmann sound upgrade uh, that i did in another video the sound value with the new tsu at BH2, I want Tsunami 2 sound because the digital dynamic exhaust with steam is just absolutely amazing. So then we go shopping. What is the smallest Tsunami 2 decoder? It's this one, the N18, if I remember correctly. And just as a reference, here is a dime on the left and a two cent euro piece on the right. So this thing is just absolutely tiny. You're thinking, why am I doing this? Because I'm not the most delicate person yeah i'm thinking that too so as i'm not going to solder onto this board itself i found this esu next 18 connector that will fit here onto the next 18 on the board and it came with some wires pre-soldered so this gives me a little bit more room and a little bit more size to, to solder and to maneuver so we're going to use this as well and where are we going to put this? Well, I did not take this part of the boiler off without a reason. Because this cab, if you see, is actually ginormous. And I'm going to set the bar quite high. I don't want to see any of the components sticking out of the window, if possible. If you look at the height, where is this all going to be? See there, you see the figurine right there? So everything underneath his arm, you won't see. Don't forget the boiler is there and it's going to be sticking out something like that. So you will see that, so we can use the boiler to hide some components, ha ha ha. So how are we going to do that? Well, this board is going to go, going to fit just right here. Just like that. There's then a little bit of space for this thing to connect right here. I also wanted a current keeper. I found the smallest one I could find, and this is TCSK1. Where is that going to fit? just behind the chair just like that so basically you're not going to see this because the boiler is going to be covering it up and this guy as well you're not going to see it i'm going to paint it black as an extra precaution you're not going to see it one small note 
I already mentioned the lighting. So there is a light tunnel in the front and there's a light just right over here. And there's a light tunnel in the back and the, let's say the hole where the light comes out. These are two wires in a little hole. It's just right there, just that one in the middle. So it shines straight up. And then there is another light tunnel. Let's see if I can change that. Yeah, that's better. There's a light tunnel. See, that's where the light goes in and then goes all the way down and then up to the back. But that means that if I put it in this direction, there's a little bump here, a bump for the light tunnel. Well, that means this unit has to sit very snug against the chairs. As you can see, that light has to go right there and the light channel has to go there as well. But this will fit. If it doesn't fit, I'm just going to chop the chairs off just like that. So that was all that, but now we still need a sound. So I found these two speaker baffles on the old InnoWeb with corresponding speakers. It's just a little bit different in size. The speakers will fit just right there and right there. And because where is that going to fit? Well, you've already guessed it. It's going to fit just right there on the top and on the inside. So if I just put it in there. I just put the white one in because you can see it a bit better. There's two options. You put it, or a few actually, put it in the front, in the middle, or the back. Well, in the front, there are these windows here. You can see it already. You don't want to put it there. That's the white speaker right there. You can put it maybe somewhere in the middle, but you're going to see it. So you don't really want that, I think. So then you can put it all the way in the back. You'll see, because we got the light tunnel, you'll still see it a little bit. There's a little nip in that big window right there. But from the back side with these windows, you're not going to see it. You're going to see any white right there. So I said there's two sizes. The black one is a little bit uh, wider. And the speaker has a little bit better characteristics. And uh, the black one is already black. So that makes my life easier if you want to use that one. You'll see it right there. You'll see it a little bit more. So I need to just think a little bit and look at the characteristics again. You'll see it here as well. If it's worth it to, to see this much uh, for better sound, I, th I think it will be. still don't see it from the back. So, sorry if I keep talking, but there's so much to discuss in this project. Um, this light right here and the light right there are light bulbs. But if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So I'm going to keep this right here. It's just too fiddly and too tiny to, to open this up and see where it goes. And then I need to find a lead that fits in there. I, I just don't even go there. I'm just going to leave them on there. And then this is DC ready. So what can I do? I can take this entire board and cut all the wires off and install the water wires direct from the decoder to the components. There's been a lot of chat on Facebook and I contacted the guys in Soundtracks if I should keep these parts right here and these yellow ones right here. And again, there were two camps, 50% almost said, leave them, it's DCC ready, they should work with it. And the second one says, no, I'll take them all off, they're terrible, blah, 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 blah. What I'm going to do, I'm actually I'm going to leave it all on. I'm, I'm just going to solder onto this board. I'm going to leave the board on it as well. Leave everything just as it is. Make my life a little bit easy. Solder straight onto the board. For people who say yes, why don't you just take the board off and put the decoder right here up front? Well, because the decoder is just a little bit too wide, it's not going to fit. Um, and I don't want to put it on top like that because I don't think there's enough height on top of the motor. <laughs> Enough talking. I'm just going to get cracking and I'll keep you updated. Uh, as we go. Here we are on the road again. The railroad, of course. Which other road would that be? I have not tried it out. I put everything uh, on here. The current, the current keeper is here, or the capacitor, whatever you call it. Put some tape here. Put this uh, wash pin here just with the speaker wires to get them out of the way. None of the other wires should be touching. Nothing's touching. There's no short circuit or anything like that. Fun fact the distance between the three axles is not evenly spread. I didn't know that bit bigger gap here than there. So I'm gonna turn on the layout and let's see what happens. Well, the blue light there lights up. Let's see if this thing actually works. So let me go in for direction. Oh, look at that, lo well, and behold. There we go. There we go, speed set number 15. It's a bit wobbly, but that's fine. It's starting to smell everything a little bit, so it definitely needs a good run in once this is all up and running. So, so far so good, this is great actually likes that it wobbles a bit, gives it some extra character. Now I'm just going to install the speaker and then there we go. So it's time to talk about a few things. I got this ESU connector that I showed you guys. And what is the case? It does not have a ground at all. And for current keeper or capacitor, 
you need a ground. The only thing you can do is try to solder a ground on the middle one right there. Well, you can see the size of my finger and maybe the size of this dime that it's just very tiny. So I'm not even going to try that. So out with this and then I found online, I found these guys. I'll put the link in the description down below. This is from uh, Alibaba somewhere online. And here you can solder your own wires and it also has a ground right there. But as you know, I always like to do things as easy and simple as I can. So I found this guy online as well from a German company DNH. I'll put the link down below. And it's pre-wired as you see. Hooray, hooray. That makes my life easy. And there is a, a ground that is this one right here that's not pre-wired. But this is actually a size that I can, and most people can uh, solder to. So this is what I installed. One thing I want to say about this uh, next 18 uh, connector right here, it has uh, 18 pins, uh, one to nine, and then it goes up here from 18 to 10. And why is that important? Because they actually uh, wired it according to the uh, the other next 18 protocol. Is that this one right here in the left top corresponds with the one in the right bottom? So a left top is your left pickup rail, for example, and right bottom is your right pickup rail. So what happens if you plug this uh, connector in upside down like that? Not much happens, actually. It's just your, your left and right pickup rails get twisted. Also, your uh, motor plus and minus get twisted, your front uh, light and your rear light, and some of the auxiliaries get twisted. So I think uh, auxiliary one and three and two and four or something like that. You can all look it up. They get twisted. So. Your locomotive will still work, you're not going to burn anything out, but some of the functions might not work properly. In my case, I don't have the auxiliary outputs, and in the DCC, you can just program which direction is forward and which light is the front light and which light is, is the back light. So I'm actually not really going to care how to plug it in, I'm just going to plug it in what's convenient for myself. So this coder like this, I plugged it in right here. So let's have a quick look. Yes, <laughs> it's getting tiny. Let me get my toothpick. Here is the decoder. What I did is I first put some double-sided tape, but that actually did not stick well enough. So I put a blob of PVA glue right there and another blob right there. Why did I use that glue? Because it's soft, so I can just cut it away if I have to take the decoder out one day. And why is it important to keep this uh, really well positioned? Well, because with this new plug from DNH that I have, you can see it, it just about barely fits in this direction. I had to force these wires over there a bit, didn't really want to do that, but it just barely fits, so I really have to keep it in place. And if it slides in the forward direction, then here you will hit this grinding gear right there that will just blend away and chop away on the electronics, so you don't want that at all, and you also don't want these these wires to, to get in there, so those have to, that one still has to be secured actually. So what else did we do? I got a, uh, a shrink tube right here because most of the wires have to go to the front and I just guided all of them. I already glued this in place as you might be able to see and I glued this on top. This is a, a lot of wires are glued because the shell fits so narrowly over here and it's so difficult to put it on. You really have to make sure everything is in place when you put the shell on because you cannot feel the difference between the friction of the shell and a wire getting pinched. So on the front, I just fire, follow the wiregram, those seven wires, I just all connected them. It, it's easy, it's, it's right rail, rail, left rail, front light, headlight, motor plus, motor minus, and the blue one is the common. So that's all right there. Then two wires, this is the power pack. As you'll see later, it works really long. Um, so this is great. So I, I really like these small guys right now. I'm a big fan. Um, the blue wire goes to the common up front. And then the, the black one goes to this ground. This is what the fuss is about. The wire at the ground right there in the corner. And then the two wires for the speaker, they're the brown ones right there, and I guided them underneath. Uh, you can just see them right here, and they go to this side because the speaker is in the cab. So what did I come up with? I got these two connectors from Soundtracks. And that's this set. It's the two pin micro connector kit. It's not cheap, but I must say it does work quite well. So if you're in a bit of a pinch, this can work. So that's one end of the connector. And I actually wired them a bit backwards, but it doesn't matter. And this is the second end of the connector. 
And as you see, or maybe you don't see it, you're not supposed to see it. So what you're not going to see is a speaker mounted here in the top. Okay, fair enough, you do see it a little bit, but... And then I glued the wires in place. And I glued this guy uh, on with a, um, how do you call that, a super glue? And why did I use the, the super quick glue? Because when, when it's hard, it's actually quite brittle. So you can pop this off with a knife, you just jam it in between and it will just break and it will come off. If you use a wood glue for this location, it's sticky and then you can't just pop it off. You actually have to cut it. But because of where it is located, you can't cut it. So that's why I use the uh, harder glue, super glue, one second glue, whatever it's called for that. I wired all of these wires in place just like that. And how is this all going to work? You now are thinking, so am I <laughs> sometimes. Connector is going to lay down on top right here. This one is going to come in off of that. And as you see, there's a little bit of slack and the pin is sticking out to the left. And then this guy will be something like this. Poof, so the pin goes in on that side. And then just about when you put the lid on, have enough slack to plug it in and then close the lid all together. Whew, what happening? But this was not enough. <laughs> it's getting more complicated. Remember this guy, boiler kettle, chopped it off, just right here, jip, jip. just use some pliers for that, bada bing, bada boom, and it's going to sit just right here as it would have originally once I have painted it. And what are we going to do now? I'm going to paint this black, the top of this. I'm not going to put any paint over here, because uh, it's partly going to be covered by this, and I just don't want to somehow mess that up. So let's get all that chopping, all that work in, and then I'll probably make a, do a quick little video when it's all done. And then we'll put it on the layout and let's listen to this little guy go. So wow, that all fit together. And this is one tricky locomotive to put back together. Um, yeah, what was the case? These two wires from the lights that were sitting on top. They were actually a bit too too high and probably pressing against the, the side of this um, the shell right here, so it didn't really want to close. And then in the final closing steps, the squeeze this down bar right here it was not aligned with the hole. Uh, you see it's a little bit damaged, but that's fine. I'm going to weather this guy later. Um, and that's why I didn't want to close. So I did that, and holy moly, what a build this is. And what we set out to do is that you don't see the decoder and the parts um from the outside and more or less we, we did achieve that the only thing here is this this plug this connector it's just it's popping up a bit as you see you can go down a bit more so i need to think how i can do that thinking maybe if i wiggle this guy in there he can just push it down with his feet you know just something like that but yeah really pleased so let me program it then put the pieces back on, and if all is well, you'll see a really nice demo video right now where I feature the correct sounds and all of that. If you want to rail fan more of this little switcher, check the video on the left. And if you're looking for ideas for your own switching layout, Click the video on the right or I design a port switching layout. Thank you very much. That's all for today. Bye bye.